All right, learning target six. We're converting rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates and vice versa. So I, again, I'm going to show you how all the formulas came about so that you aren't like these are just like random things they made up because they're really not that hard to figure out. So in order to do that, think about a rectangular coordinate system on top of a polar coordinate system. So that's what this picture kind of been trying to draw here in your notes. So at the very corner here we have where the origin would be in rectangular coordinates and where the pole would be in polar coordinates. And let's say we're looking at this point. So that would be x, y, or it would be r theta, depending on which system we were in. Okay? If it was x, y, so we're looking, just thinking about rectangular coordinates, then from the origin to here would be the x distance. And then from the origin to right here, that would be the y distance. Does that make sense to everyone? If you're thinking about polar coordinates, r is the distance from the pole to the point. It's the radius, right? So this would be r. And theta is the distance from the axis to wherever you stop. So this would be theta. Does that make sense? So I have a right triangle here, which means we can use normal trig things to figure out these forms. Well, Not even that complicated. Normal, like, geometry level trig stuff, so Sokotoa. So here's, here's the deal. The first examples we're going to do today, you are given a polar coordinate. So you're given R and theta. That is given to you. And your job is to find X and Y. So this is how these formulas come about. I already have r and theta. That's what I have. Let's say I'm trying to find x. If I have x and I have r and I'm looking at theta, that means I have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse if you're looking at theta, right? So what trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? And we know that adjacent over hypotenuse would be equal to cosine. If I want to solve for x then, I would just multiply each side by r, right? right? So you'd have x equals r times cosine theta. Well, that's the first equation I gave you. So it was pretty easy to com come up with that. It wasn't just like something that they decided one day it worked. In the same way, let's say I wanted to know y. If I have y and r and theta, then if you're looking at the theta angle, then you have the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So y over r equals sine theta. And if I solve for y, I would get y equals r times sine theta, which is the second equation I gave you. You don't have to memorize these equations. They're on the red formula sheet. So you just have to know. I wanted to show you where they came from because I think it's pretty easy where they came from, but you just have to be able to use them on the homework. You know, it's like come up with them again, be able to use them. So I'm going to do one example, and then you're going to do an example. All right? Now, we're going to do the first one here. I'm given R theta. Theta is in radians. I encourage you to look at a unit circle first. I expect your answers to be in exact answers, if possible, and only decimals if, because there's not an exact answer that we're going to come up with. So if you look at the unit circle, 4 pi over 3 is on the unit circle. So we're going to use the unit circle to get the information. Contrast, the second example, 250, not on the unit circle. So you're going to have to come up with some decimals, and that's going to be fine. All right? So x equals r times cosine theta. So x equals negative 2 times cosine of 4 pi over 3. Four pi over three is way down here in the unit circle. What's cosine of four pi over three? Negative one half. Negative one half. What's negative two times negative one half? Positive one. Then you do y equals r times sine theta. 
what if you want to go We're coming up with the rectangular coordinates from the polar coordinates. So you have to have an X and a Y to have a coordinate. All right, just checking. All right, so negative 2. What's the sine of 4 pi over 3? Negative square root of 3 over 2. So the 2's cancel out. Negative times a negative is a positive. So you get positive square root of 3. If you would use your calculator and type that in in radian mode, you would get a decimal. Again, I prefer the exact answer. So the answer is 1 square root of 3. Questions about that? All right, I want you to do the second example. Now, on the second example, 250, again, is not on the unit circle, so you're not going to be able to get an exact answer. And if you're going to use your calculator, since 250 is in degrees, your calculator should be in degree mode. All right, so do the second example. Two fifty is not on the unit circle. You have to use your calculator anyway. What do you do I don't understand your question. <laughs> you don't. You just use two fifty. Yes. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. Okay. Those who are still working, shall we hope we'll be done in a second because it doesn't take that long. Why didn't you just type in 2.5 times the sine of 250 in your calculator? Oh, I got negative 2.4. Oh, do we have to be in the green bag? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, so now that we've had some debate about this, questions about how I got negative 0.86, negative 2.35. Oh, Let me go ahead and preface your homework. The other way isn't necessarily that more much more complicated, but this is the way that your book goes. Like it goes in order. Like it shows you how to change polar coordinates to rectangular and then rectangular to polar. But then in the homework, it flip flops. So the first part of your homework will be the second thing we're going to do. And the second part of your homework is the, what we just did. So just don't freak out when you're looking at your homework. The book decided to flip flop itself. Any questions about changing polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates? All right. Same diagram. So you can come up with the other equations. All right. In this case, we're going to be given a rectangular coordinate. You have x, y. That is given to you. So if I have x and y and I want to find r, and this is a right triangle, how might I do that? The, uh, Pythagorean, theorem. the Pythagorean theorem. You have two sides. And you're missing the third side. So you use the Pythagorean theorem. So you have r squared equals x squared plus y squared. But you don't want r squared. You just want r. So we take the square root. And that's the first equation you're given, r equal. Right? That was relatively easy to come up with, that idea. But if you square root, it really is x plus y. No. It's not just x plus y. That's not how that works. Yeah. Nope, it's not. Because there's a sum. Do you mean to prove it to you with numbers? Okay. If we don't have, if we, we don't care about R, we're trying to find theta. Let's say if we have X and Y and we want to find theta. I have the opposite side and the adjacent side. So what trig function uses that? 
tangent. So tangent theta equals y over x. So how do I solve for theta? I don't want tangent theta, I just want theta. How do I get theta by itself? Times y. The times inverse. You take the inverse of both sides? Inverse tangent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they have arc tangent of y over x. Now here's the issue. Your calculator calculates inverses and they give you principal values, which we talked about last semester. Principal values means it only gives you values from negative 90 to 90. We might need values other than that. So, because of that, you have to look at your original x value to decide what you're going to do. And it gives you two different options. All right? If x is greater than 0, so if your original x, this x right here, and the point that's given to you, not something you came up with, like in the problem. If the x is greater than 0, then you just do the inverse of y over x, and you're fine. No big deal. That works. However, if your x is less than 0, you would need to have what's on the opposite side of the unit circle. So you would need to add pi. Now, I would advise that you do all of these in degrees, because if you get do them in terms of pi, then you get decimal values, and you don't remember that they're radians. Like instead of getting pi over 3, you're going to get some decimal. So I would change them to all to degrees. Just do everything in degrees. So if you're doing degrees, instead of adding pi, what would you add? 1 8. All right. Now, all of these, there's not three equations you have to do. You only have to do two. You have to do an r equals, and you have to do one of the theta equals equations. Just depends on what your x is. All three of these are on the red sheet as well. So it tells you all the information you need. Those are also on the red sheet. You can see at the top it's like um, some about polar coordinates. It has a little section. It's above the trig section from last semester. All right. So let's do some examples. I'm going to do one, then you're going to do one. So you're given a rectangular coordinate. This is an x, y. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find r. So r equals the square root, negative square root of 2 squared, plus the square root of 2 squared. What is the square root of 2 squared? 2. And what is 2 plus 2? That's 4. That's 4. And what's the square root of 4? 2. two. All right. Any questions about how I found R? Then I need to find theta. So theta equals the inverse tangent of y over x. So I need to decide if I need to add the 180 or not. So if you're looking at the original x in the problem, is x greater than or less than 0? Less than 0. Correct. x is less than 0 which means I need to add 180. That's what the formula says. If x is less than 0, you add 180. What is the square root of 2 divided by negative square root of 2? Uh, negative 1. Negative 1. All right, so again, I suggest you do this in degrees. So go into your calculator, make sure it's in degree mode. We're going to do the inverse tangent of negative 1, and I'm going to add 180 degrees, 135. So my point is at 2, 135. The arc tangent of negative 1. It's the inverse, yeah. Questions about how I did that? All right. Then again, I want you to do the second one. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think I left the negative off. So yours says negative 2, 5. Right? Okay. So when I do the answer, I'll make sure I don't do this. All right. So you do the second one, and we'll see if your answer matches mine. You're going to get decimals, and it's going to be fine.
that's your personal thing. You're going to get decimal for the degrees anyway, so... That we got. Again, you can leave it as a square root of 29. That's not going to be deep, but the I mean, it doesn't really matter. Any questions that I can answer right now? <laughs> 